There are lots of stingless bee species here in Costa Rica, uh, about 59, and um, we've got a handful here at the center. And so I'd love to show you them. I'd love for you to meet them. I'd love for you to learn a little bit about them because not a lot of people know just how many stingless bee species there are in the world. And um, they're brilliant, brilliant little creatures and they do so much for us. And they're all very unique um, with a huge range of diversity, not only in their appearance, but also in how they operate how they uh, manage their hive, um, which species of plants and, and trees they like to collect their pollen and nectar from, um, the style of piquera or the entrance that they build, and so many other um, characteristic features of them. So uh, I'd love to show you um, one of the stingless bee species that we have here called culo de boy, or um, the scientific name is Trigona fulvidentris. So come along. Here they are in a little makeshift box. Well, not so little. Um, when I did the rescue in the tree that was getting cut down, uh, I didn't anticipate quite the size of the colony. They're quite a large colony. But I'll build a new box very soon for them. That's gonna be a little bit more comfortable. But this is them. Let's zoom in a little bit. They're very, very calm bees. I say that because not all stingless bees are relaxed <laughs> or tranquil. Some of them can be quite fierce and really good defenders, but these Kulolewe don't really put on much of a defense. Their, their defense is a little bit more preventative. So their entrance and all of the seal that you can see around here, that's made from fecal matter and it deters a lot of different predators from attacking them. It also means that we don't really harvest their honey or their pollen or anything like that in the case that it might be contaminated or in the case that we accidentally touch the entrance or the, the seals around the hive as well as the honey pots. But the honey itself is not contaminated unless of course we do that. So if you're able to extract a little bit of the honey without touching anything else, then it's still, I believe, a wonderful honey to test. We don't do that here though, because it's not about the honey for us. It's about these little beauties. These ones were in a tree that needed to be cut down for a construction that was going to take place or that is going to take place. And so um, we were able to uh, extract them whole. On the inside of the tree, they had built their own little cocoon, if you will, instead of it being anything like you would normally see with a, a, um, a honeybee colony, they don't build panels. Um, all stingless bees build very differently. And these particular ones, they build a protective bulb on the inside of the tree. Sometimes they also build in the ground. This is one of the species that will also build a, a hive in the ground. And with that protective casing or within that protective casing, they then start to build their pots and um, their brood nest. And their brood nest is very different, again, to what you would expect to see from any other type of bee. They build discs and they are uh, parallel with the ground and they're stacked on top of one another and then um, spread throughout the reserves of pollen and honey. And those are held in pots instead of hexagonal um, constructions. They build little pots of honey and they store their pollen and honey in those. So that's the Trigona fulviventris. I look forward to sharing more of the species that we have here with you over the next little while. So I hope you stick around.